and of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. This morning's Gospel of Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee is the substance of the mystery of God that was seen by the prophets. That is to say, this is the incarnation of the vision that was seen by the prophets. We see the identity of the biblical image of the way or the path that dominates the landscape of the Torah, the Psalms, and the prophets. That path, that way, is Jesus. And the path that he is, is on an exodus that ascends to the Father. In the Old Testament, this way, Odos, that we come upon so many times, most of the time refers to the exodus of Israel through the sea, of God delivering her from Pharaoh and his armies, and leading her to Sinai, where he gave them the law. And so this word, odos, or way, or path, also refers to the law of God, that by which one follows the way, which is Jesus, in his ascent to the Father. Now this law that was given to Moses on Sinai was a copy of the heavenly pattern, which is another way of saying that it was an image of Christ, or an image of the image of God, which is Christ. On the mountain, God revealed to Moses as well the mystery of creation, this tells us that the law of Moses is a formulation, it's an articulation of the essential principle of creation. In other words, the law of Moses was not superimposed upon Israel. It was rather the revelation to Israel of the very principle by which creation exists, by which it has its shape, and by which it moves. But creation itself then, is a copy of the heavenly pattern. And man, as the crown of God's creation, is the supreme copy, created by man, or created by God as male and female in God's own image and likeness. Pondering these biblical images is like walking in the mystery of Jesus Christ by the sea and peering into watery theological depths that descend into depths that are beyond all things. Walking by the sea in the mystery of Jesus Christ, we are walking in that snowmelt river that Ezekiel saw issuing from the east gate of the temple of the last day, flowing all the way, he says, into Galilee and into the Arabah, or Arabia, which is a word in Hebrew that means the desert. We need not guess as to the identity behind the image of that snowmelt river in Ezekiel. The Lord himself tells us who that river is. He tells us through his prophet Isaiah. He says to Isaiah, Behold, I flow out of myself to them as a river of peace, and as a snowmelt river, I will pour out my glory upon the nations. This is why I said a moment ago that seeing Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee is the substance of the mystery of God that was seen by all the prophets. What Ezekiel saw was what Isaiah saw. Isaiah gave it different words. Joel saw it. He gave it different words. But it's all the same mystery. It's all the same vision. With this, 
we step into the boat in the sea of the mystery of God. And the sea beneath us in the boat suddenly becomes impossibly deep. I think the thrill of this boat ride on the sea is expressed well in the apocryphal wisdom of, the, of Jesus ben Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus. Listen to this. This is impossibly deep. It says, the thoughts of wisdom, which is Christ, fill the sea to overflowing, and the counsel of wisdom flows from a deep and great abyss. And I came forth as a brook. It's a different word that we find in Ezekiel and in Isaiah, Echeron, Echemeron, but it's the same thing, a brook. I came forth as a brook from a river, and as a channel I came forth into paradise. You understand, a snow melt river, which is the word that is used in Ezekiel and Isaiah, a snow melt river, it comes from up in the mountains. So here he's saying that he came forth as a brook or as a snow melt river. He came into paradise, which is a mountain, which means he came from heaven. I said, I will, offer, I will water my best garden. You understand that Eden is the image, is an image, a biblical image of the human heart. I will water my best garden, which is the heart of man that God created. I will water abundantly my garden bed. The virgin Theotokos, one wonders. Lo, my brook became a river. And my river became a sea. Again, different words, but it's the same image that you find in Ezekiel, where that snow melt river issues from the east gate of the temple as a little crick, just a little trickle. And as it goes and flows, it becomes a deeper and deeper, until it becomes such a mighty river that Ezekiel, who is measuring it with a fathom, cannot do it anymore. He can't, he can't even go into it anymore, it's so deep. And it falls all the way into Galilee, into the desert, all the way to the outlet of the sea, as it says. But Ezekiel, now going back to Ecclesiasticus, I will yet make my teaching to shine as the morning, and make my light to shine afar. I want you to note how the teaching of Jesus is not a set of ideas, it's a light. It's a light that shines, it says, a great distance, which I think we could take to mean it shines throughout the whole universe. I will make, I will make, yet will I make to flow like a river. I'm drawing out from the meaning of the verb. Yet will I make to flow like a river my teaching as prophecy or as a proclamation. In other words, what prophecy means is a proclamation and leave it for all generations forever. Again, see that the teaching of Christ, the preaching of Christ, it's a light and it's also cast as a mighty river that flows, going back to Ezekiel, through all of Galilee, into the desert, and to the outlet of the sea. And it says, I will leave this river of teaching to float for all generations forever. Behold, it says, I have not labored for myself only. I think this refers to Holy Pascha, the Lord's Pascha, when he finished the work, the labor that the Father gave to him. So listen, behold, I have not labored for myself only, but for all who seek wisdom, Christ. In the setting of this imagery of the way, now joined by the image of a river and the sea in the wisdom of Jesus ben Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus that I just quoted, there comes to my mind an especially beautiful passage from the Psalms. Thy way, O Lord, 
is in the sea. Thy paths are in many waters, yet thy footsteps cannot be known. His footsteps cannot be, cannot, cannot be known because they are the way of his wisdom, which as we read in Ecclesiasticus, fill the sea to overflowing and comes from a deep and great abyss. So that the way of Christ, his wisdom, is deeper than the sea because they come from the infinite depths of God the Father and as such they are impenetrable. So, let's not raise our eyes too high. And let's be content this morning, pondering the theological depths of this morning's gospel that we can penetrate. In this gospel image of Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee, we see the way, the path of glory. He has descended like a snowmelt river from his heavenly heights higher even than the summit of Sinai, higher even than the summit of Paradise. And he has poured himself out. He has emptied himself to descend all the way down to where we are, down here to the shore, along the sea of this life. That is to say, down here to where we live on this earth, as we flow like a river, into the sea of our death, which is itself a depth that we cannot penetrate, even though it is not as deep as the unfathomable depths of God. And with the imagery of this morning's Gospel, note that we are presented with the image of the waters, of a sea, and also of a river, which is another biblical image that is perhaps often overlooked. Yet this image of the waters, or of a river, or a sea, dominates the biblical landscape together with the image of the way, or the path, or the way of the exodus that leads through the sea, out of bondage, and through the river Jordan, into the land of promise, or of Israel's inheritance, the land given to Israel by God. So I'm, I'm asking you to note that there are two, at least among the images in the Bible, there are these two dominant images, that of the waters and that of the path or the way. And they go together, as I just read in a couple of passages here from the Psalms. Thy way, O Lord, is in the sea, thy path in many waters. It's a reference to the Exodus, which is a descending of God to us, so that he can take us with him as he ascends to the Father. So this is the Exodus, an ascent to the Father. It is, I think, well known that there are two paths in the Bible, two paths. It makes me think of that commercial, two. Can't remember what was the commercial of. Two, not one, but two, two paths in one. What was it, remember? Somebody tell me a coffee hour. What was it, what was that about? This is before the time of New Yonkers. There is the broad way that leads to death, and there is the narrow way that leads to life. But there are also in the Bible two waters, two rivers, two seas. There is the sea of life, that is to say, the sea of this life, bounded as it is by the sea of death, that overwhelms the psalmist, and from whose depths he cries out to the Lord to deliver him and to save him. But then there are the living waters of the Holy Spirit. And as we hear in the prophets, in Ezekiel and Isaiah, for example, the snowmelt river of peace, identified as the Lord himself in Isaiah and the wisdom of Ben Sirah, that flows from the east gate of the eschatological temple all the way into Galilee, giving life and healing to every creature it touches as it makes its way all the way to the outlet of the sea. And I want you to notice in this morning's gospel, the Lord comes to the sea, comes to the, by the shore of the Sea of Galilee. He sees two fishermen. He calls them. And then it says he goes a bit farther. And he calls two more fishermen. This takes us right back to Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 9, where the, the river of peace, the 
snowmelt river is making its way along, you know, through Galilee into Arabia and into the outlet of the sea and along the and along the, the banks of the river, of the snowmelt river that issued from the temple, are fishermen casting their nets into the sea, into the river. Go back to Pascha, the Holy Resurrection. Where did the angel tell the murmurers to go? To Galilee. And here we are in Galilee with the disciples, getting their orders from the Lord to become fishers of men, just as it was foreshown in Ezekiel and the other prophets. But I think most clearly, most explicitly of all the prophets in Ezekiel, What might be that outlet of the sea in the vision of Ezekiel? What would that outlet of the sea be? If not the waters of creation, over which the living waters of the Holy Spirit were moving in the beginning. They are the waters that have become the waters of death, those waters of creation. They become the waters of death. But when the snowmelt river, that is wisdom, the Lord Jesus Christ, pours himself out and comes forth from the east gate of the temple, from the virgin Theotokos, and comes into those waters as he makes his way all the way into the tomb. Those waters become waters. As he makes his, all, his way all the way into, the, into his tomb, into the great mystery of his Sabbath rest, then the waters of this life, the sea of this life, that was the waters of death, become the waters of life because they are filled to overflowing with the living waters of the Holy Spirit and they become holy waters they become living waters they become sanctified and deified waters they become even the incarnation of the Holy Spirit and this is the mystery is it not that we are playing out playing out is probably not the best word that we are, that we are showing forth in holy baptism, when he asked the Holy Spirit to descend upon these waters and to fill them with himself. These are the waters I just described, these waters that are filled with the living waters of the Holy Spirit. These are the waters that we are immersed in when we descend into the baptismal font. They are the waters that we drink in Holy Eucharist, in that consecrated wine filled with the blood, the body and blood of Christ, so that we are given in Holy Eucharist to receive the Heavenly Spirit as our drink, together with the living bread, the precious body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the medicine of immortality. In other words, we are receiving and drinking this snowmelt river of peace that was seen by the prophets. We are eating and drinking it receiving it into ourselves, into the waters of our life, and those, the mystery of Holy Eucharist is healing everything it touches in us. Ezekiel 47, what is it, verse 10, I think, maybe 8, it's in that area. We receive the Heavenly Spirit, the river of peace, the snowmelt river, He flows into us. And he heals and brings to life everything that he touches in us. Body, mind, and soul. As we receive him into the innermost depths of our being, all the way into our secret heart. I'm thinking that the image of the living waters of the unfathomable seas, even of the snowmelt river that we find in the prophets, is actually an image of the Holy Spirit. And that the image of the path or of the way is an image of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So note how the waters of creation in the beginning, brooded over by the living waters of the Holy Spirit, bring forth light. An image of the incarnation, when the Holy Spirit overshadows the Virgin and she conceives in her womb the wisdom, the light of God the Son of God incarnate. 
in whom is the life of man. So that the Son of God, when he is incarnate, is called the Christ, the bearer of the Holy Spirit. Can you see that the Christ is a synonym for the snowmelt river? But note also how the teaching of wisdom as given in the wisdom of Ben Sirach is a river. The teaching of wisdom is a river that waters the garden bed or the human spirit, the heart of man. And this is the word that is proclaimed by the apostles, by the apostles, who become by means of this word fishers of men. I think that we tend to see the Christian faith as a set of doctrines alongside other doctrines distinguished from them only by the different concepts that they contain. I think that we tend to see the life of the church as just another mode of this earthly life. And so we tend to regard the mysteries, for example, of baptism and chrismation, of marriage, simply as ceremonies marking the graduation to another stage of this life. But this is not what we see in these biblical images of the path and the waters. The apostolic preaching and teaching of the church is the river of Christ, the Son of God anointed as man with the living waters of the Holy Spirit. This river is an altogether different life. It is life that is of the Holy Spirit. It's not of the earth. To receive the uncreated life of God that is filled with uncreated light and eternal life. One does not receive the full substance of the church's teaching and doctrine without receiving in the mystery of baptism and Holy Eucharist the Spirit of Christ, so that the living waters of our body, brothers and sisters, the waters of our sexuality, become filled with the living waters of the Holy Spirit, whose mighty current carries us on the path that ascends the mountain to the deep that is beyond above the top of the mountain. If, that is, we strive to walk that path in the spirit of Christ, in the wisdom of God, and not in the spirit of our own wisdom, I ask you to ponder this. Because if we see the Christian faith simply as a set of ideas marking the different stages of our life through the different ceremonies, if that's how we see the Christian faith. Well, brothers and sisters, then church becomes an inconvenience because it becomes an interruption of what our life is all about out there. You don't want to come to church. You'd rather stay out there. Eat your, drink your morning coffee. Uh, you'd rather go to the park and have a nice 4th of July barbecue. You don't want to come to church. It's an interruption. It gets in the way of the way that, of the river of life that is flowing to the sea. Dead. But when it hits us, when we wake up and realize that what is given in the church, the body of Christ, is this river, this snow melt river of peace that comes not from not from some place in the earth but it comes from heaven and flows down onto the earth bringing a life that is altogether different from this life altogether different it is the uncreated life of God that is flowing through the church and wants to flow into us 
to heal us, to raise us to life. Not a life that is of this earth, but a life that is of the Holy Spirit. A life that is flowing on an exodus that is ascending to the Father. And so, in the church, we receive these living waters of the Holy Spirit, whose mighty current would carry us on the path, Christ, that ascends the mountain to the deep that is above even the top of the mountain. It would carry us if we strive to walk that path in the spirit of Christ and in the wisdom of God and not in the spirit of our own wisdom. When we wrap our mouths around the bait of the apostolic fisherman, Holy Eucharist, then we are eating and drinking this heavenly spirit, this river, this mighty river of peace. That is to say, if we ponder it so that it is this teaching of the apostles, this teaching of the apostles, of the church, and not the teaching of the world that is shaping and filling our mind. If we swallow the light, in other words, if we walk in the light and not in the darkness of this earthly life that returns to the dust it came from, if we walk in this light that is carried in this river that, that illumines this river of peace and is given to us in the mysteries of the church, if we walk in it and not in the light of the world which is darkness, then when we pass over through the outlet of the sea which is our death, we will find ourselves being carried into the deep that is beyond all things. We will find ourselves being carried to the top of the mountain and beyond. Instead of going to the top and then going back down into the dust, we will find ourselves going to the top and into the spirit that will carry us all the way to the throne of the Father and the uncreated life and light of Christ. This is our hope, dear brothers and sisters. This is our faith. This is what we need to be reminding ourselves of. This is what we need to be pondering. This is what we need to be centering our lives on. May the Lord help us. Through the prayers of the failed hope of the Lord Jesus Christ, our God, save us. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen.